course three, lesson 90, we're looking at sets and being able to indicate our different sets, um, find unions and intersections, uh, subsets, and show Venn diagrams that help us illustrate relationships among sets. So let's first talk about this idea of sets. And that's just a collection of, element, el of elements. So an example is curly brace, 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on and so on. All right. What is this set? Well, if we're talking about 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on, we are actually talking about the whole numbers. Whole numbers are all of our positive integers plus 0. So these are the whole numbers. Okay? <clears throat> all right. Another example is now we have not just 0, 1, 2, 3, but the negative ones as well. Well, this is integers. Right, so we can use sets to determine different uh, groups of numbers that we have, or we can use just about anything ordered pairs, numbers, variables, geometric figures lots of different things can be in a set. It's just a collection of elements. So, if we are asked to create a set of even integers, we might say something like this always using these curly braces. And if we're talking about even, we can have both negative and positive even in integers. So negative 4, negative 2, 0, 2, 4. Always showing a pattern so that we could continue it on to infinity, both positive and negative. So just like that, with multiples of 3, we could say dot, 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 because we can have negative infinity. Negative 6, negative 3, 0, 3, 6, and so on. You don't have to have this exactly, but you do need to show the pattern so that we can say that we have all of the multiples of 3 in the set. If we are talking about the set and we're talking about something inside the set, we're talking about an element, which we use this funky symbol for. And we can say something like this. 3 is an element of the integer, saying that in the integers we have the number 3. So 3 is an element. Or maybe a non-example, okay? One half. One half is a decimal, which means it's not an integer. So we would say one half is not an element of the integers. Okay? Let's see about these numbers, okay? We need to use set notation to indicate whether each number is an element of the set of rational numbers. Remember, rational numbers, think back. Those are the ones that can be shown as fractions. So we're talking about all of our counting numbers, whole numbers, integers, because those can be shown as fractions. But we're also talking about our fractions and decimal numbers. The only ones that we can't include are decimal numbers that don't repeat and go on forever. Things like pi, or the square root of 2, square root of 3, square root of 5, things like that. All right, so let's see. 2. Well, 2 is a whole number integer. Okay, so we can show it as 2 over 1, which would make it rational. So 2 is an element of the rational numbers. Okay, and I would show it like this. I would say 2 is an element, and then in brackets I would put rational numbers. How about 1 half or the square root of 2? Well, 1 half, just like what we saw earlier, this is a fraction. So it's not an integer, but it is a rational number. And how about the square root of 2? Well, like we just said, the square root of 2, its decimal goes on forever and ever. So we would say that no, the square root of 2 cannot be an element of the rational numbers. All right. So we can say things are or are not elements of a certain set. All right. If we were to look at some of these, we can also try and graph these on a number line. So if we wanted to talk about the set of integers, we would do a number line for maybe 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. And we would say the set of integers. Well, integers can be positive and negative, but there are whole numbers on the number line. So I would put a dot on each of these. Would I connect them? And you would say no, because we can't have those decimals fractions in between. We just want those numbers. And if we wanted these square roots, 
we would say, okay, what's my smallest one up there? Square root of one. Well, that can be reduced to one. And my biggest one, square root of four, that can be reduced to two. So I would put my square root of one and square root of four and then say, where does the square root of two fall? And now I could find a decimal equivalent on a calculator or I could say, well, I know it's between one and two, so maybe it's 1.2 times 1.2. Well, that gives me 1.44. That's not quite close enough. We continue on 1.3 times 1.3. That gets closer, but 1.4 times 1.4 actually gets us the closest at 1.96. So we would say it's closer to 1, but kind of in the middle here at square root of 2. Okay, at 1.4, and it keeps going on forever and ever, but a 1.4 is a pretty close estimate. Square root of 3, we can do the same idea. And we know that it's actually going to be closer to 2 rather than 1 in this case. So we would say, all right, I can continue this pattern and say maybe 1.6, 1.7. And we actually see if we continue this method that it's close to 1.7. So we would put it near 2. So we have our numbers, square root of 1, square root of 2, root 3, and root 4. All right. <coughs> Sets can be related in many different ways. And one way that we can relate them is using subsets. A subset means that all of set A is able to sit, fit in set B. So we would say set A is a subset of set B. Okay, and this is how we would show it with A subset B. What we're saying is maybe A is uh, just the set of 2 and 3. We just have those two data points. And B is the set of, let's say, 1, 2, 3, four and five. So B is a lot bigger. And we also see that this two and three, we have completely with A. So all of set A can fit into set B. Basically, another way to say it is, can we find all of set A within set B? And we can. So we would say A is a subset of B. Now we can do this with big number sets like the whole numbers, counting numbers, integers, things like that. Or we can think about things like rectangles and quadrilaterals. The set of rectangles is a subset of quadrilaterals because every rectangle is a quadrilateral. Now we have lots of other quadrilaterals, but inside of this idea of quadrilaterals, we have all of my rectangles. So rectangles are a subset of quadrilaterals. It's basically saying, can I fit all of rectangles into quadrilaterals? Yes, I can. Okay. How about if we have natural numbers, which are our counting numbers, and the set of integers? So our natural numbers, we're saying this is 1, 2, 3, and so on and so on. Whereas our integers are dot, 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 negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and so on for both directions. Well, we can see that that 1, 2, 3, and so on, and so on, and so on for our counting natural numbers can fit completely inside of our integers. We have it right here. So we would say that the natural numbers is a subset of the integers. And I'm using the <coughs> notation that we use for those sets of numbers, n, what looks like an n is for our natural numbers, z is for our integers. Okay, let's see a couple others. All triangles and all polygons. So is tri are all of my triangles a subset of all of my polygons or all, all of my polygons a subset of all of my triangles? And you would say, of course, all polygons has a lot more, but it does contain triangles. So we would say a is a subset of b. Rational numbers and real numbers. Well, real numbers are, we say those are my irrational numbers and my rational numbers. So it would make sense that rational numbers is a subset of my real numbers. Because I can find all of my rational numbers within my real numbers. So this idea of subsets. Another way to show relationships is with a Venn diagram. So we can say we have all of these rectangles, but then another subset of those are squares. OK, 
okay? Because squares are rectangles, but not all rectangles are squares. Okay, so we would say that squares are a subset of rectangles. So this is kind of a visual representation of what we're talking about. We can fit all of squares within rectangles because rectangles contain squares plus some other things. <clears throat> Sometimes though, as we know, Venn diagrams can overlap. This overlap is called an intersection. And we use this, <clears throat> this symbol for an intersection. So what we're saying is where we have overlap, this purple part, this purple blue, we call that the intersection of A and B. A intersection B. So let's give it some numbers. We could say maybe A, the set of A is uh, one, two, three, four. And the set B is three, four, five, six, and seven. So we could say, all right, my set A, I would have one and two in this space because those are unique to A, but three and four are both in A and B. That's why we have an overlap. Five, six, and seven are uniquely in B. So we would say that the intersection A intersection B is three and four. Those are where they overlap. So A intersection B is the overlap of A and B, in this case, three and four. Another example, not with numbers, but with I an idea is if we have rectangles, squares, and rhombuses, or the idea of rectangles and rhombuses, where they intersect, where they overlap and have something in common is squares. Because squares are rectangles, but squares are also technically rhombuses, okay? Because rhombuses, we have those parallel sides, right? Just like squares do, okay? So they overlap. So we would say the intersection of A and B, if we called this my A, this my B, we would say A intersection B are my squares because that's where they have common elements, okay? Intersection, we have common elements. Now, on the other side, we have a union, and this is combining sets. So union is symbolized with this right here. Kind of looks like a U for union. So we would say the union is the set of all elements in A and B combined, okay? So if A and B, let's give it some numbers again. A is the set of one, two, and three. And B is three, four, and five. We would say, okay, I want all of the elements in A and B. So A union B would be one, two, three, four, and five. Now you may ask, why do we not copy um, the three and have one, two, three, three, four, five? Well, we just want to know what are all of the possible elements, and so we just represent each of those elements once. Just those elements once. So if we say the union of the set of boys in the room and the set of girls in the room is the set of students in the room, saying that, okay, if um, set A is the girls and set B is the boys, then A union B. I want all of the elements, which means I have the boys and girls in the class, so I have the students in the class. Okay, so union is all of those elements combined together, but we take out those repeats. If there is a possibility that we don't have any elements in the intersection, they're just completely different, there's nothing in common, we call this intersection an empty set, an empty set. So we have lots of different um, symbols that we've used so far. We've talked about sets with those curly braces, element with the E, subset with the kind of C looking thing, intersection with the N almost, kind of like intersection, union with the U, and empty set is our last one. And we can show it with this kind of zero with a cross through it, or you could actually show it like this with our curly braces, but there's nothing inside, okay? So make sure that you know these symbols, but remember, if you don't have anything in an intersection, that's called an empty set, okay? 
let's look and see what else we have in this lesson. So use a Venn diagram to show the relationship between the sets. Find A intersection B. So if we have A and B here, if we're talking about an intersection, we want those numbers that overlap. So in this case, A is 3, 6, 9, and 12. B is 5, 12, 15, 20. So we would say A intersection B is, well, the overlap is 12. Because if we were to use a Venn diagram, we would say, all right, A has 3, 6, and 9 by itself. B has 5, 15, and 20 uniquely. And in this middle section, we would have 12. Okay. All right, our next A and B, parallelograms and trapezoids. Okay. Well, if you remember parallelograms, we're talking about all of those sides are parallel. Things that kind of look like this. Whereas trapezoids, we just have two sides that are parallel and the others are not. So where would those overlap? Where would those overlap? Well, <clears throat> if you think about it, I'll let you pause the video for a second. If you think about it, if we have our parallelograms and our trapezoids, that intersection, I believe, would be our rhombuses. Okay, and let me check to make sure so that I don't have incorrect information on this video. Okay, but if we look, the intersection of parallel uh, parallelograms and trapezoids, I'm sorry, I am wrong. There's actually nothing in common between these, okay? Nothing in common because trapezoids will never have those two parallel, two parallel sets. So we would say this is an empty set. There's nothing in common. Sorry about that little mistake. So we have nothing in common there. It's called an empty set. Lastly, let's find the intersection and the union for these sets. Okay, so A and B is, A is 1, 2, 3, 4, B is 2, 4, 6, 8. So A intersection B, we want the commonalities. So we would say that's 2 and 4. Whereas the union, A union B, we would say that is, well, I have a 1, I have a 2, 3, and 4. I have a 6 and I have an 8. Remember, putting in them in number line order is the best way to go when we're talking about our sets. <clears throat> All right, I'll leave these last ones for you. Use a Venn diagram to illustrate the relationship between sets and indicate the union, okay? So talking about putting them together, finding everything that's in that set, okay? Well, I hope this was helpful for homework and for studying.